Yes, sir. Welcome, everyone. I am Sarthak Joshi, Business Development Associate at Kulthi Media. So, without further delay, I'd like to thank our principal, Dr. P. B. Mane, sir, and our H. O. D. Dr. Pramod Mushrif, sir. the department of engineering sciences the iiedc ist and the desa committees for giving us this opportunity to present what we have learned and share our business perspectives with all of you so i'd like siddesh to take over now thank you hi there um, hello everyone uh, firstly uh, am i audible audible yes yes right. you are audible okay great so hello everyone i am siddesh kulte and i am going to be your host for this webinar now um before we get started um i would like to introduce myself um i'm currently the founder of kodma gang a nonprofit organization based in kentucky united states and um, along with it i am also a marketing and strategic business planning expert so uh, you might be wondering what exactly is this webinar about like what is a startup and how is all of this going to benefit me whatsoever so uh, let me sum up this very quickly so can you also switch on your video please oh okay yes all right am i am i visible yes yes great so many of us are unique we want to start something of our own uh, maybe a project a business idea or uh, maybe some sort of research um, well this webinar is basically a bridge a bridge between you and the corporate world and along with it it is also a, a bridge between you and your golden business idea uh, you will be learning about how you can successfully build your own startup create awareness about it and turn it into a profitable business now you might be uh, along uh, among some people who might say that um, well i do not have a startup idea i'd rather prefer a job well uh, this webinar is actually for you too because um, you'd be learning a lot of stuff that no one would tell you when you'd be getting a job so uh, stick around till the end and uh, i swear that you will learn a lot now um, how can you get the most out of this uh, there must be a way right for like if you are uh, learning something and want to keep it forever you you actually don't want to miss out on some of the important stuff covered uh, when you have that experience so i'd actually really love if you grab a pen and a book and start noting down all whatever thing whatever you think is important and would help you in the near future so let us say that you have an amazing business idea and now want to start it as soon as possible okay like you want to do this world changing thing and you want to get started so what is the first thing the very first thing that you should actually do um would it be something like incorporating your business investing in it or what exactly well to be honest uh, it's a little caveat but the first thing is to complete step 0 okay and this is actually very exciting uh because you actually need to know that is your startup even good enough uh, or does it even solve a problem okay a good idea always or a good startup idea always solves some sort of problem um a great example would be that um there are many people having businesses around but they do not have an online presence okay um their great when it comes to brick and mortar type of business uh, it's something like offline but uh, they do not have online business and that is why they might be losing a lot so that's a very big problem and you can actually do as a startup um, you could build them a website due to which they could get a lot of clients so that is really great and it's it's very simple because uh, startups tend to solve 
simple problems which are experienced by everyone instead of complex problems which are experienced by just a few people. And th this is actually what sets a business apart from a startup in the early stages. Um, but you also need to understand that if your idea doesn't actually solve a problem or is not is it's not even good enough, then people are not actually going to invest your money, invest their money in it, and you might actually run out of business. Um, next comes the important part. So you might be having a lot of great good business ideas, uh, but you can't really work on all of them. Like imagine if you're having five to six different business ideas, which you think are really good, but you cannot actually work on all of them at the same time, right? You need some kind of filter in the middle, okay? So you need a system actually that you can stick to so that you can differ from what is a good idea and what is a great idea, right? You need a filter uh, through which actually your time won't, act, won't get wasted. And this is where the PCP principle comes in. Okay, and this part is actually very amazing. You'd be surprised. So PCP basically means passion, crowd, and profit, okay? So let me help you understand this very quickly. So let us say that you currently have like around five different business ideas and you think that all of them are really very good. Okay. But now you just need to pick one and that one should uh, work out really well. Otherwise your time might just get wasted. So what you can actually do over here is you can check if your idea meets these three things, which is passion, crowd, and profit. Let me explain this one by one. So first, do you have passion for the idea that you would be working on? For example, um, I love to play basketball myself uh, and I play it all the time. So I wouldn't mind teaching other people how to play basketball and earn money out of it. That's actually a really great business idea. But let's say that I love to play basketball and I am starting a business or I'm starting a coaching in a business which teaches people how to play cricket. So that actually might not work well because I do not have a lot of interest when it comes to cricket. Um, if you have passion, then you can surely move forward to the second, uh, second thing, which is crowd. Now here you need to understand that is there demand for your idea, whatever you'd be teaching or whatever your service might be? Is there really a demand for it? Is it really a problem that needs, that is experienced by hundreds or thousands of people around the world? And if there is such a problem that exists, then people would actually pay a lot for you solving that problem. Now, if this isn't the problem, which is that there is a huge crowd there are people there is a huge number let's say thousands and hundreds of thousands of people are experience this are experiencing this problem then you should move forward with the third thing the third part which is profit um so the idea of yours is it actually going to make you money right um is it going to make you a profit if yes, then congratulations. You have figured out the best idea of all the five or six ideas that you really had. And now you can move forward. But you also need to be on a lookout with your competitors because whichever industry you are in, maybe sports, maybe software as a service, maybe a hardware company or anything it may be, there are going to be competitors. Even if your niche is kind of very small, even if your target audience is kind of very small still, so you need to learn from your competitors. You need to stand apart from them so that people will actually start noticing you, okay? Now, the next thing is about um, planning and execution. So uh, there is this famous quote by Thomas Pickens where he says that a fool with a plan is better off than a genius without a plan. And I think that this is actually very accurate because uh, you might have a good business idea. You can use a PC, the PCB principle and filter out the best idea of all. But what if you just didn't plan and didn't execute it properly? Then you might just not uh, get the results that you actually wanted. And what I mean by 
what what i actually mean here is that uh, you need to take action okay you need to like maybe plan a weekly monthly quarterly calendar and along with it write down what your kpis are all right now for those who do not know what kpi actually means kpi means uh, kpi actually simply means key performance indicator it is a simple metric that tells if your business is actually making a profit um, is it scaling or is it just losing out customers so uh, some of the great kpis would be user activity for example now let us say that you have a startup which is more towards building websites and getting more customers way and so selling a service or something so at that time or at that uh, in such a business case uh, user activity might matter more than the numbers of number of meetings fixed okay now uh, let's say that your startup is kind of b2b business to business then in such cases i don't think so that user activity might be a great kpi for you instead at that time meetings fixed would be something that you need to focus on and then there are some generic things like uh, uh, calculating what your net profit is how uh, what your monthly revenue is or what your quarterly revenue is uh, what are the costs and how you can be more efficient this is also a great kpi to be consider if you want to consider so um, let's now talk about how you can create awareness for your startup or your business idea after all like how much ever you great your idea is if you do not know how to put it in front of the right people you won't be making money and understand understand this very carefully uh, actually listen this very carefully if you don't know how to put your business in front of the right people i said in front of the right people you won't be making any money see everyone is not actually your customer for example let's say that i am a cricket coach so my target audience will be would be people who want to learn how to play cricket right i won't be going and asking people who want to learn how to play basketball that hey i am a cricket coach you want to learn from me okay so that just wouldn't work out so what i mean here is that you need to actually figure out what your target audience is and this is very crucial because these are your customers these aren't just some ordinary people okay these are the ones that are going to invest or you can say pay you money to solve their problems now if you know what a target audience is and uh, even they know about you and they love what you're doing they love what you're solving for them then they will readily buy it from you before you even asking them and trust me this actually works so see it it's actually like magic but it's it's very true because i have done it myself as well so if a customer loves you or your company then he will readily buy your solution instead of give, going to another competitor and buying it from them because uh, in the end if you are able to make the customer satisfactory then um, you can just create your own monopoly in the industry okay so let's now talk about some ways how you can create awareness because this is very crucial so currently in the world where instagram reels and uh, youtube shorts shine a lot um, you can uh, use these channels to your advantage and get the more get the most out of it so you could actually start a youtube channel um, help out people with smaller problems in your in your industry and then introduce them with your products and they'll surely buy it because that will work now i have been the head of marketing at a at a youtube channel named the new boston it's more like programming and stuff like that so it currently has around like 1 million subscribers so i actually used this tactic and people readily buy it we actually made uh, small videos around like 5 to 7 minutes and uh, they were on some key programming topics and people actually loved that and they asked that do you have a course on that so we were actually working in the course industry and all that stuff so it actually really worked really well what you need to do is um, solve a smaller piece of your bigger problem and then slowly slowly you can introduce your product to the customers and that is how you actually sell
So the next is uh, you can also use social media apps, for example, Instagram or let's say Twitter to market your products. And then there's network marketing. Uh, well, this one is actually like um, word to word or this, this actually comes uh, in handy when you have something like a B2B business where you have a big product maybe which costs around 15 to 20,000. So at that time, network marketing plays a very important role. And lastly, of course, the online presence. You can actually build your own website or start a blog to tell customers or again, small solve problems, and then you can introduce your bigger product to them and they'll really, really, really buy it. All right, so uh, next comes pricing a product, right? Making that chaching sound come uh, come in. So this is actually a very crucial part when it comes to planning and execution, right? Uh, let's say that, uh, as I said, I as I if I start a uh, cricket coaching business, and uh, the people around me, the coaches, all those coaches are uh, charging around um, maybe let's say four thousand rupees. And then suddenly I come out of nowhere and start charging rupees 10,000 per month. Well, then nobody is going to buy it from me, right? It's, it's not going to work that way. So uh, there needs to be something due to which you can actually fix a price, right? There needs to be some kind of formula maybe or some kind of matrix that you can use so that you know that what exactly should you price for the value you are providing to the society. And this is where this value demand matrix comes into play. And it's actually very interesting if you look at it closely, right? So at the top right hand over here, we have high value and a high demand. So this product, the, the products, if you are selling these kind of products, you're actually in the gold industry, right? Uh, actually in the golden industry, because um, you are getting high value for the services that you're providing. It's, it's very valuable to people. It's very valuable to the society and it is in demand. So if these two are checked as yes, then you can price your products way higher than your competitors. And believe me, people will really buy it from you. It, it actually works that way. But let us say that uh, your product is low in value. Uh, your crowd is like hundreds or just thousands of people, not, not more than that. And the demand is also very less then I would recommend not selling such a product. Okay. Because after all, what you'll be making won't even cover your business expenses. So why just waste your time on such an idea? And then we have other things over here. Like, let's say if your product is high in value and low in demand. Now these kind of products are like luxury products. For example, a t-shirt from H and M. Well, that will, that will actually come in this pricing segment. Well, you moderately or moderately charge or you can say moderate to high pricing and then there is low value to high demand products now these are like commodities for example let's say bread or peanut butter well that is that costs very low value but it is really high in demand so at such a segment you want to keep your pricing so that you can grab on as many customers as you can Uh, there's also a psychological tact over here. Now let's say that your product uh, is around rupees 100. So what you can do is that instead of pricing it for rupees 100, um, you can price it for like rupees 99 or 97. Um, it, it's not a big difference and it won't skyrocket your conversions, but um, the human brain actually perceives numbers like nine and seven to be more around a term called value for money or you can say okay this product is actually looking worth it so i'll just buy it i'll just grab it so it actually works that way and this is actually whenever you go uh shop you will see that price rupees 99 599 because this kind of thing works out well all right so um Next, there was actually a research done by a well-known marketer named Neil Patel. Um, he's into building services, giving services and building products on 
So here is much important thing. And it was actually priced at rupees, uh, sorry, priced at dollar 130. So what he did is that he conducted a small experiment for two months. Uh, in the first month, um, he priced his product at dollar 130. And in the second month, he just reduced his product price by $1. Okay, $1 is around rupees 77. So he reduced it from like 130 to just 129. And he had a growth of 23% in his business. So that's a massive number actually. Well, let's say um, 100 people buy, buy his product in the first month for $130. And in the next month, 123 people bought it because it was for 129. So you can see that when it, when this number comes in thousands, then it's really going to make a huge difference. And I hope you understand this psychological tact very well. Now let's talk about a hot topic called fundraising and especially fundraising for your own business. So um, if anybody of you has watched maybe Shark Tank India, um, I'm very sure that you can relate to this term called fundraising. And it's actually an awesome term when it comes to fundraising or own business. So fundraising simply means that you're asking an investor to invest in your business, okay? Uh, and that is it, it simply means that it. <laughs> now, when you raise funds, you give out equity in return of money so um, I'd like to actually show you an example so that you'll understand what is fundraising uh, in a very easy manner. Great. So let's say that you have a great business idea and it works out really well. You're also getting a lot of customers, but now you're thinking that, okay, now it's time to scale. So what you can do is you can fundraise for your own business, okay, where an investor will come in and let's say that he's offering you rupees one lakh in return of 10% equity. So what he's actually saying over here is that he's asking 10% uh, equity, which is 10% of your company's ownership. And in return, he will give you rupees 1 lakh. So for those who don't know what is equity, equity simply means that it's the ownership of your own company. So if you have a company and you're the owner of it, that means that you're having 100% ownership. And now an investor comes in and he asks for 10% equity. So now, well, now if you agree to this argue, uh, if you agree to this agreement, then you will have to give him 10% of your ownership, and in return he will give you one lakh rupees. So that is how this whole fundraising kind of stuff actually works. So there are many ways how you can fundraise for your own business, right? First comes in angel investors. So these are actually individuals with a lot of money who are thinking of investing as an option in startups and companies. Uh, and what they will do is like, they will put in a huge amount of money into your business and ask for around 10 to 20% of equity from you. Then comes venture capitalist firms. Uh, it is similar to an angel investor, although when it comes to VC firms, it's like a firm of people, okay? Like an angel, in, uh, angel investor is like an individual, but when it comes to VC firm, it's actually a whole, whole firm where 10 people put in money onto your business in return for some equity. And then there are like, uh, then there's like crowdfunding and uh, friends and family. So over here, you can see that the first two, which is angel investors and uh, venture capitalist firms, these two are actually kind of the traditional routes for a startup, where if you want to fundraise your idea, your first approach should be an angel investor or a VC firm. <coughs> but let's say that you are into an early stage um, and you want to go into something like bootstrapping, where you put in your own money and want to ask the public that, hey, I'm solving this problem for you all. So would you like to put your money into this thing? And this is something like crowdfunding or asking your friends and family where uh, it's more like the untraditional method where you like put up maybe a social media campaign or a fundraising campaign and um, say that, hey, I'm running this campaign. Would you like to fundraise? Uh, would you like to fund for my company? 
and here actually equity doesn't doesn't really matter especially when it comes to crowdfunding because crowd crowdfunding is an act where um, hundreds and thousands of people fund in fund your company and just expect a small perk maybe a t-shirt from your company or just a demo trial of what you're actually doing so that's what they expect and the last one which is friends and family of course you can ask your friends and say that hey i'm doing this prop uh, uh, i'm solving this problem so would you like to invest and be an early investor in my company of course you have to um, be more um, intelligent while pitching your idea to your friends <laughs> okay so now um let us say that <coughs> you have you had some great ideas you filter out a great idea um, it does solve a great problem experienced by thousands and hundreds of thousands of people around the globe. You also know your target audience. Um, you know how to execute things, how to plan for the future. You also have enough funds that you can run for a year without any hesitation. And now you are actually ready for the big day, which is the launch day. Um, but before just launching, you need to understand that either your launch will be successful or it might be just a flop show now i'm not demoralizing over here but it is the truth and you need to face it in the startup industries now what are the steps that you can actually take so that you could launch successfully and believe me it's not, it's not that kind of rocket science or something it's it's very simple to be honest but you just need to follow certain types of procedure to launch successfully. Okay, so all you need to do is focus on the KPIs and focus on the customer. If you are meeting all the KPIs and um, your customers are pretty satisfied with what you're doing, what you're solving for them, then that is all you really need to worry about because um, like that's all you need to focus on right if, if your customers are happy and you are doing good when it comes to kpis all the metrics are green and they are uh, they're actually scaling up uh, in y and x-axis then um, i think you have uh, you have your business launched successfully and now let's come to some further steps that you might uh, consider um, which actually might prove helpful uh, when starting out when you're just first starting out so let us say that you have a good business idea and um, want to discuss it further then i can absolutely help you with a free consultation call on getting started with your idea and um, growing it into a whole new business sector uh, it will be more of an ama meaning that it will be an ask me anything session where you can ask me anything related to your business or even just say that hey is this idea even going to work or not so yeah that that will be very great if you take this step and move ahead with your startup idea um so this is actually the link i'll be posting this link uh, shortly into the chat box um, where you can just book a free appointment. It's totally free. I get nothing out of this. It is just for your own benefit. If you really have a startup idea and you really want to work on it, then I would love to hear from you. Hear it from you. Now let us head over to our Q and A session and um, see that if anybody is actually having a doubt or something. I'll just stop sharing the screen for a second. So, um, <clears throat> hello, Nidhi ma'am. Can you please just uh, let everyone message in the chat section so that uh, they can ask their question and answer questions if, if they have any. Um, okay, I'll just check out if, uh, if I can uh, unmute everybody or uh, if people can message in the chat. 
um uh, until then i'll just uh, share the link for if you want to book a free call with me great so i have just shared the link and if you want to uh, really want to pursue your startup idea and book a free call you can just surely go ahead and book it it's it's totally free it will be an ask me anything session you can ask me just literally anything related to your business idea and i will be there guiding you every step Okay, so hey everyone. Um, Nidhi ma'am will be unmuting everybody. So if somebody is having a question related to the startup or anything, um, just you can ask me right now. Yes. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, students. May be joined as a webinar, but it is actually to get some knowledge. Ah, so it's not like your regular lecture. Ki usme pocha nahi pocha to chalega. So if you have any query, you can ask. There are so many. One twenty four participants are there, and no one has a query. Strange. Huh? That's that's kind of strange. Yes. Any query? Any question? If you are uh, like. If you are willing to start your startup, then please ask. Go ahead. So, Sitesh is among from you only. Yeah, I'm actually in the IDS branch first year. So yeah, yeah, I'm with you all. Sitesh is uh, from the reason E. He is in uh, first year, and uh, I found like definitely he can help the youngsters, the young. Engineers, the entrepreneur, maybe the few of you, those who are willing. So, if you think and ask, hmm, whatever the queries, how to sustain in the long run? Okay, so if you want to sustain in the long run, um, I would say that you, you, if you are in the early stage, just starting up, then. Um, you would like to cut down all the costs or at least uh, just spend as little as possible uh, in the first year that way you can sustain a long sustain for the long time because what really matters is the amount of time you are putting in and the amount of money you are putting in so for the amount of time you actually have to put in a lot of time but um, when it comes to investing money in your own idea that you can surely control by yourself so Less expenditure means you can go for the long run. Okay, anybody else? Come on. Any other query? If you don't want to ask, you can write in your chat box also. Any query? Okay, uh, Siddhesh, uh, how the idea just came up in your mind that let's start the startup? What was the reason? Okay, so actually the the thing was that um, I just wanted to be like stand apart from the crowd. And um, when I started my own startup, uh, which is about teaching how to code for free and online. Mm -hmm. So at that time, uh, there were not many. There were there were there were not like free resources. Like I had to take a course for maybe five six thousand, 
and uh, I was just in seventh at that time. So um, YouTube wasn't a really big thing in seventh, right? Geo wasn't there, I guess. So at that time, I thought that um, maybe this is a problem experienced by a lot of people. Um, like, let's say that I want to learn what is front end development and um, I just don't have the resources. What should I do? I, I just can't sit there. So what I did is that I created my own platform and then uh, I just started up. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's one question, sir, how, how to manage a team or to find suitable uh, people for company? Okay, so this is actually a great question because um, if your team is really supportive and it works really well, you can actually grow exponentially uh, and also do, uh, within a short period of time. So what you need to do as a startup is that um, you need to actually um, not go with people who are like, you won't actually dedicate to your startup, right? So there's this thing like um, you come up with a business idea and you fall in love with it. It's, like, it's actually very good. So what you need to do is you need to find other people who are also in love with that idea, who are also facing such kind of problem and would love to help other people who are also experiencing such kind, such kind of problem. So you need to gather people around you or your team members should basically also fall in love with the idea, uh, with your business idea. That way you can um, get some great help because those will be the people who would do anything to get the startup up and running. And that's what you really want to look for. Okay, uh, Sudesh, what was the initial amount you have invested to start your startup? Zero rupees. <laughs> uh, actually, these should be the queries of the students, which I am asking. Uh, yeah, actually, this this should be the questions that should be uh, that should be asked by everyone. That should be asked. Uh, but huh? yeah, it, it's fine. It's fine. I I think that uh, many of them are afraid. Like, uh, um, I afraid. being an introvert, no, I am also afraid of asking things. Uh, just thinking, the webinar is just like that. The webinars give you an opportunity to learn number of things. Okay, next question, Sadesh. Uh, how can you help? your uh, your uh, classmates or your uh, first year students or your college through your startup can you help in any of the way um yeah surely actually um, i'm currently running a marketing agency um, it's basically promoting and uh, promoting and creating maybe flyers or banners or websites for clients and all that stuff so i generally uh, am having a lot of experience when it comes to starting up so what I can actually do is that um, I can just help out um, anybody who is out there, maybe related to uh, with, with their business idea uh, in fields like maybe marketing, uh, developing a website for them, or maybe something like just a consultation on uh, is uh, how how shall they proceed, or you can say how can they actually start up in a really good great manner without um, investing a lot of a lot of money. So I can uh, help okay, with that. Uh, so we can do one thing, uh, like definitely it's a very less, we, uh, we can take the survey and those who are interested further to go ahead with any of the activities, such type kinds of activity. And uh, those who just want to be the part of your company or like those who just want to take your help, your advice. So we can take the survey of that thing and then after that we can get the idea hmm? yeah that that will be perfect i guess mm -hmm. yes so okay later on we can do it uh on monday hmm? so any other yeah. query anything else which the students just want to ask no question okay so uh yeah sarthak is there sarthak Hello. Yeah, please. go ahead. Thank you, Sadesh. Hmm? Okay, Sadha, just go ahead. Yes, um, before just, uh, yeah, but just before ending it, all of this, I just like to give a personalized message to everybody. 
so um thank you for being a great audience actually um it, it means a lot to me to be honest uh because right before the seminar or right before this webinar i actually was very nervous that uh will i be able to present or will i be able to get my message out to everybody you out there so um just thank you and um thank you very much uh, it, it 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 really means a lot to me and um, furthermore, I'd, uh, I'd also like to thank the Department of Engineering Sciences, um, HOD sir, uh, and of course, uh, Neeti ma'am and uh, Dr. P.P. Mani for giving this wonderful opportunity of um, uh, displaying or showcasing my talent to everybody. So thank you very much for that as well. So Sartak, uh, can you, just go on with the vote of thanks. So I, Sartak Joshi, would like to thank uh, the de Department of Engineering Sciences, the IEEDC, IST, and the DESA committees for giving us this opportunity. I'd also like to thank our principal, Dr. P.B. Mane, sir, and our HOD, Dr. Pramod Mushrif, sir, and yes, uh, all the audience to silently listen and to uh, ask their query thank you okay so with this thank note uh, let's end the program and students really i'll be highly delighted if again those who are now participants anyone from you just want want to be the part or just want to organize a webinar that will be really a wonderful thing that is going to happen so you can come personally to me you can meet me, discuss in the college, and then please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you all for joining. Okay. So, okay, this so just a second. I'd like to uh, post in the attendance link as well, the feedback form. Yeah, yeah, do it. Do it. Yeah. Students, don't, don't forget to just mark your attendance. Okay, so I've posted the attendance link uh, and I hope that everybody uh, liked the webinar and uh...